Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Manchester United won Ruben Neves from Wolves. Wolves have set their asking price, it's 30 million. Ruben Neves has been at Wolves for a few years now. Wolves paid 15.8 million for him from Porto. He's under contract with Wolves until 2023. He's made 145 appearances for them in the Premier League and he scored 17 goals. He is a midfielder. I'd take him at Manchester United because his performances for Wolves have been sublime and he's well proven in the Premier League. He's only the age of 24, so he's still young. He's got a lot of development in him. Now, Manchester United are ruined. over the transfer pursuit of Erling Haaland because of Jadon Sancho. Erling Haaland's agent, Minio Riola, he wants to make Erling Haaland the first ever million pound a week player. Now, The Athletic recently said that Erling Haaland to Manchester United is off following Minio Riola's roadshow. And The Athletic said not so long ago that we called our interest in Erling Haaland after prioritising two deals. It says we want a centre-half and a right winner instead of Haaland. Erling Haaland's agent, Minio Riola, and his father, Al Finch Haaland, went to England not so long ago to hold talks with several Premier League clubs. They've also held talks with Barcelona and Real Madrid. Said the other week that we declined to meet Erling Haaland's agent, Minio Riola, over discussing a possible deal for Erling Haaland. It said recently that we are one of the clubs that can afford him. Borussia Dortmund are demanding 150 million. The main explanations I take him at Manchester United is because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer knows the player well. Solskjaer give. Haaland his debut at just the age of 16 at Mulder. <laughs> Plus he's still young and he's got a lot of development in him. And he would assure us goals. Solskjaer did say in his press conference prior to the Brighton game that he played down talks of Man United chasing Haaland. He said... Harlan do make his own mind up. Said a few weeks ago that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer kept calling Harland to persuade him to join Manchester United. Because earlier on this season, Ole said he was following Erling Harland's progress and he was keeping in touch with the player. Back in December 2019, Ollie and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Haaland to negotiate a possible move to Man United. Solskjaer did reveal how impressed he was with Haaland in training when he was at Mulder, but he made an admission saying that he struggled with bad knees at Mulder. Erling Haaland has a £68 million release clause, but it doesn't become active until next year.
Erlin Haaland's father, Alvin Charland, has spoken about his son's career and his prospects, and he's spoken about his son's transfer links to Man United before. I can assure Haaland will leave Dortmund if Dortmund failed to qualify for the Champions League. Dortmund paid just £17 million for Haaland, and he's under contract with Dortmund until 2024, and he's been at Dortmund over a year. Now, I'll delve into some news on Jadon Sancho. So, according to recent reports, we are refusing to rule out a move for Jadon Sancho. Apparently, the wage demands have been agreed. We just need to come to an agreement now on a transfer fee. Borussia Dortmund have admitted that they will sell Jadon Sancho for the right price this summer. Borussia Dortmund's CEO recently revealed that the club will discuss exceptional offers for Sancho. Earlier on this season it says we was preparing a £50 million bid. But earlier on this season it said we dropped our interest in Sancho due to the progress of Mason Greenwood. Borussia Dortmund CEO said earlier on this season that Sancho, Haaland and more Dortmund stars could be sold in the summer to avoid financial crisis. Now Sancho has visited our Carrington training ground quite a few times so that's fueled speculation up. Last summer he was our number one priority target. Last summer, Borussia Dortmund's valuation was £108 million. And we was reluctant to meet their £108 million valuation. We was only willing to pay so much up front. But Sancho to Man United last summer was extremely close because it said the personal terms had been agreed, the agent fees had been agreed and even a contract had been agreed. Uh, Dortmund said to us last summer that we had until the 10th of August to sign the player. But we obviously missed out on that deadline, so Sancho remained at Dortmund. Fabrizio Romano, who's a very reliable Italian journalist and close to Man United, he's spoken a lot about the Sancho saga. He recently explained Sancho's hold up to Man United. And Bill's Christian Fark, he's spoken a lot about the Sancho saga. Analysing the vast majority of Sancho's career at Dortmund has been very consistent. This is his fourth season at Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund paid just £8 million for him from Man City and he's got a contract with Dortmund until 2023. Now, will Edison Cavani stay or will he go? Now, I'd love Edison Cavani to stay for next season. I think quite a lot of Manchester United fans would. And Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants him to stay for next season. Prior to the game against Tottenham, Solskjaer said that he's unsure over Edison Cavani's future. Uh, Cavani was absolutely superb against Tottenham. Uh, Cavani scored a very, very good diving header. It was a good cross by Mason Greenwood. Uh, Cavani played a part in Fred's equaliser. And Cavani had a disallowed goal by VAR. It was a good finish, by the way, from Edison Cavani. I disagreed with VAR ruling it out because it should have been given. The reason VAR ruled it out is because McTominway's hand hit human son. But it wasn't intentional from Scott McTominway. Obviously, Solskjaer recently slammed human son over the disallowed goal. 
Obviously, Jose Mourinho's hit back at Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, reflecting on his comments regarding Son and Solskjaer and Mourinho have had a bust-up. But Edison Cavani has made a fantastic impact since he's come in. You know, in a lot of his games, his hold-up play has been good, his movement in and out of the box has been good, He's created chances and he's scored good goals. But there has been some games where he hasn't got enough service and he's looked isolated. You know, we got him on a free transfer last summer. He signed a one-year contract with Man United with an option of a second year. Edison Cavani's current contract expires at the end of the season, but we do have an option to trigger his contract for a further year. Now, Footballer Insider said not so long ago that Cavani is willing to take a pay cut to join Boca Juniors. He already has a verbal agreement with Boca Juniors and Boca Juniors are willing to offer him a three-year contract. Uh, Marcus Rojo, who is a former Manchester United player, he's held conversations with Cavani over the move to Boca Juniors and Rojo recently urged Edison Cavani to quit Man United for Boca Juniors and he's promised he'll take him fishing. He said we held showdown talks with Edison Cavani over his future at the club earlier on this season. Ollie said earlier on this season that Solskjaer... Sorry, Ollie said earlier on this season that Cavani was closer to... Boca Juniors than staying at Manchester United. Edison Cavani's father came out earlier on this season and said that Edison Cavani's unhappy. He's not comfortable in England and he wants to leave. And reports in Argentina said prior to that that Cavani's decided to leave Man United after one season. But like I say, I think he should stay for next season. Despite him being, what, 34 or 35. Uh, you know the news on Pau Torres from Villarreal. Manchester United have held Pau Torres transfer talks. Supposedly, Man United can sign Pau Torres for less than his £56 million release clause in the summer. I think Villarreal are willing to accept around £43 million. Now, reports from Spain said earlier on this season that Pau Torres is heading to Old Trafford because he wants to come to Man United. Uh, Real Madrid's president, Florentina Perez... <coughs> was um, infuriated with Man United for entering the race because Real Madrid were emerged as the favourites to get him. You know, Pau Torres has been at Villarreal a very long time. He's got a contract with them until 2024. Do you think he'd go well alongside Harry Maguire in our back line? Oh, there's been a few centre-halves on our agenda. It recently said that Solskjaer had drawn up a six-man centre-back shortlist. The first four names were obviously Jules Conde, Konate, Rafael Varane and Pau Torres. I'm expecting Man United to make around three or four signings in the summer transfer window. I've identified the areas where Man United need to strengthen up. I think we need a striker, we need a right winner, we need a defensive midfielder and we also need a centre-half. Reports said not so long ago that Man United will spend big in the summer transfer window, but Solskjaer mentioned that he wants to keep transfer dealings quiet. I can assure that Solskjaer will be Manchester United manager in the summer transfer window and he'll be Man United manager next season. Because we've already said that Solskjaer will not be sacked, even if we fail to win the Europa League. Solskjaer knows how imperative it is to get his first trophy on the board as Man United manager, because he's not yet won a trophy. And 
we haven't won a trophy since 2017 and that's nowhere near good enough to our standards. The Europa League's our only chance of any silverware this season. We've got a very good chance of winning it. Don't forget Oli did say last month that winning, winning trophies can be an ego thing. He said that having regards to some other managers and some other clubs. But Oli, yeah, I think he does deserve at least another season at Man United because he has made progress in certain aspects. And Solskjaer has agreed a new three-year contract worth £30 million. I can't assure he's going to see it out. He still has one year left on his current three-year contract. Solskjaer should get the backing he deserves in the summer transfer window because obviously we've got John Murtough, he's our director of football and it was the right decision by the club getting a director of football in because I did say that's one of the structural changes that we needed. He's our first ever director of football by the way and John Murtough knows the club through thick and thin. He's been at United since 2014. Darren Fletcher, he's our technical director he knows the club through thick and thin because he endured two decades as a player for Man United. And, you know, Woodward standing by Solskjaer. Woodward believes Solskjaer is the right man to lead the club forward. He released a statement earlier on this season saying that the progress by Solskjaer and the players this season is clear. So in that aspect, Woodward is backing him. And when was enjoying them really bad periods under Oli, you know, Woodward came out and assured that his job was safe. And he come out in general and showed his support for Oli. I've already told you, the main explanation Solskjaer is still Manchester United manager is because he's a club legend. Disregarding him being a club legend, I can almost assure he wouldn't have been here now. I can assure we're going to finish in the top four this season. I think we're going to finish second now. I think second place is secure, reflecting on that 3-1 win against Tottenham. You know, finish second and win the Europa League, I'll turn around and say that represents a good season for Man United and that gives us something to build on going on into next season. Uh, we are going to offload quite a few players in the summer transfer window. Like I said, there's a good chance that Cavani's going to leave. A lot of Manchester United fans are saying that we need to sell Anthony Martial because Anthony Martial has been out of form for the vast majority of this season. The chances have been there for Martial, but he hasn't converted them. Solskjaer did say earlier on this season that he's back in Martial to rediscover his form. And he said he was impressed with his work rate. Martial's out with injury. Uh, Solskjaer confirmed not so long ago that it's very likely he's going to be out for the remainder of the season. I reckon Martial's had two good seasons. He was good last season and he was good in his debut season under Louis van Gaal. Martial has been at the club over five years. We got him in a deal worth £54 million from Monaco. I think it was last season Solskjaer gave him that number nine shirt. Uh, there's a very, very good chance that Juan Mata will leave because Juan Mata doesn't get in R11. He uh, was out of injury not so long ago. And at the first part of this season, he rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. But I reckon that Matt has had a good career at Man United. He's been at the club over six years. We got him in a deal worth 40 million from Chelsea back in 2014. One Matt's current contract expires in June. We do have an option to trigger his contract for a further year. Uh, Donny van der Beek, I think we should sell him in the summer transfer window because he's not getting enough opportunities at Manchester United. If he was getting enough opportunities, I'd be saying keep Donny van der Beek because he is a good player. Now, we are considering a van der Beek swap deal. There's been talks of a Donny van der Beek and Adrian Rabiot swap deal. 
I think that'd be a good swap deal for Man United. Uh, most of Donny Van Der Beek's appearances have come from the bench. He's only started two games in the league this season. Uh, Ronald De Bauer has actually backed Donny Van Der Beek to become a success at Old Trafford. And Ronald De Bauer said earlier on this season that Donny Van Der Beek still feels loved at the club, despite his lack of game time. Earlier on this season, Van Der Beek wanted to hold showdown talks with Ed Woodward over his future. And he said Van Der Beek wants to quit Man United after one season due to his lack of game time. Van Der Beek's versatile, he can play in three different roles and we got him in a deal worth £40 million from Ajax last summer. Uh, I think there's a very good chance that will offload Nemanja Matic because he isn't one of our first choice midfielders. Uh, Paul Pogba, he could still leave Man United in the summer transfer window. But there again, he could stay potentially past the summer. Uh, Paul Pogba was superb against Tottenham recently. Um, he was playing in more of an advanced role. And I like him in more of an advanced role because that's where he's more effective. I'm not too keen on Paul Pogba in a deeper role. But yeah, against Tottenham, you know, Paul Pogba had a good chance. Didn't convert it. I think he tried to back heel it into the net. And obviously he got the assist for Mason Greenwood's third goal. And he set himself free a lot, which was good to see. We've been getting the best out of Paul Popper in recent months. We really have. He does bring creativity to the team. Don't forget, he was out with a thigh injury for a while. He was out for the first part of this season with an ankle injury. And he was out for the vast majority of last season with an ankle injury. So he has sustained a few injuries now at Man United. But um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wants Paul Pogba to stay and he wants him to sign a new contract. Um, Ole did say that Paul Pogba's future lies at Manchester United and it also said our players would be devastated if the club decided to sell him. Now, Pogba's had a long-running transfer saga. Um, he's been relentlessly linked to a return to Juventus. Uh, obviously, Juventus have been keen on a swap deal for Pogba. Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked to him. PSG have been in for him. And Barcelona have recently been in for him. And it did recently mention the four Barcelona players that Man United could accept in a Paul Pogba swap deal. Paul Pogba's current contract expires next year because earlier on this season we triggered that one-year extension on his contract so he's under contract with the club until June 2022. If he stays potentially past the summer, he'll leave on a free next year if he doesn't sign a new contract. Minio Riola, Paul Pogba's agent, he's obviously been desperate to get his client out of the club. Uh, Minio Real doesn't have a good relationship with Man United and he has been criticised a lot. As it stands at the moment, Pop is our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him, like I've said, and this is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. Phil Jones, I also wanted to offload him because he's very inconsistent. He's been out of injury for about 14 months now and plus he doesn't get in our team anyway. You know, Jones is the only outfield player that's still here from the Ferguson era. This is Phil Jones' 10th season at Manchester United. Surprised he didn't leave in January. Uh, Maxel Tuan Zebe, there's a good chance we'll offload him because he doesn't get in our 11. Uh, De Gea, there's a good chance we'll offload him in the summer transfer window. Some Man United fans think it would be a mistake to let De Gea go in the summer transfer window. But I don't think it would be because I reckon now that De Gea's had his years at Man United, you know, he's been at the club 10 years, so he's been a long servant. 
I reckon De Gea's had eight good years out of the ten years he's been with us because in the last couple of years he has been a liability reflecting on the mistakes he's made. But De Gea's won everything domestically at the football club. He's made over 500 appearances in all competitions. Now we've set the price for De Gea, it's £50 million. And there's a few clubs chasing him, I think it's AC Milan, Real Madrid, PSG and Atletico Madrid. I said there's a very good chance he'll go back to Spain. A uh, recent report said we could loan De Gea out instead of letting him go permanently. But it recently said De Gea had made his transfer decision and he's preparing to leave Man United and it said we will pay off his huge contract. De Gea has got two years left on his current contract and he's on £375,000 a week. And Romero, I'm also expecting us to offload him. And could we loan Brandon Williams out because he's another player that doesn't get in our 11. But yeah, we sell players in the summer transfer window. We'll generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. But there's a lot of players that will stay in the summer transfer window. And there's, I reckon there's quite a few players at Man United that have got long-term futures. So I think Dean Henderson will stay. I think he's long-term for Man United. Luke Shaw will stay. He's been superb this season. Maguire will stay. I don't know about long term. Lindelof will stay potentially past the summer. But I don't think he'll be here long term. I think Bay will stay potentially past the summer. And Wan Bissaka, he'll stay. Um, I can assure he's got a long term future at Man United. Like I said, Popper could stay, but not long term. Uh, Fred, I think he'll stay, but not long term. But Tommy Moore will stay. Uh, Bruno Fernandes will obviously stay, Greenwood will stay because he's been fantastic since he broke into our first team squad. Uh, Rashford will obviously stay. And Mad Dilo Traore, he's another one that will stay. But uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's been Manchester United manager now over two years. And there is positivity regarding Solskjaer because obviously he has made good signings as Manchester United manager. He's spent almost £300 million and so far he's enjoyed four transfer windows as permanent Man United manager. Obviously the players Solskjaer has brought in is Daniel James and wan and Harry Maguire. Also brought Bruno Fernandes in and Odin Agalo in on loan. Agalo left the club in January. And he's also brought in Donny van der Beek, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Ahmad Dilo Traore and Facundo Palestri. We loaned Facundo Palestri out in January. But as, as yet, Solskjaer's not got all the players that he wanted to recommend in. He's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he's coming as well. Uh, Solskjaer this season, he's done well in some aspects. You know, he got us to the EFL Cup semi final, got us to the FA Cup quarter final. He's more or less got us to the Europa League semi final. We are unbeaten in our last 23 Premier League away games, so we haven't lost away from home in the Premier League for over a year. Went on a 14-game unbeaten run this season before the 3-1 defeat to Leicester in the FA Cup quarter-final. You know, last season, in all his first full season, he guided us to three semi-finals, got us qualification for the Champions League and got us a third-place finish. And I like the way that he has promoted the youth. And we've enjoyed good periods under Ollie where we have seen consistency. So that's very good. And we are sitting second in the Premier League. But yeah, Solskjaer has learned quite a bit as Manchester United manager because he get, he's gained managerial experience reflecting now on he's been at the club and he's tried a few different elements. You know, before he was with us, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mulder, but they're not a big club. And before he was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. And his record at Cardiff was absolutely disastrous. 
But Solskjaer is our best manager since Ferguson. You know, there's been a lot of United fans demanding Oli out. Obviously, they've got main explanations why they want him out. But there's still quite a lot of Man United fans that are Oli in and they believe he needs more time at the club. You know, in the last eight years, Man United have been playing catch-up. Obviously, mistakes have been made in the last eight years and that's why we haven't been nowhere near as consistent as we'd like to have been. You know, I think the board's definitely been one of the biggest problems at the club for a while. But yeah, uh, we've sat three managers since Ferguson retired and that was David Moyes. We sat him after 10 months. He's the worst manager we've ever had and finished seventh under the Moyes here. We sat Louis van Gaal after two years despite him winning the FA Cup and we sat Jose Mourinho after two and a half years despite him winning three trophies if you want to include the Community Shield and he also got second place in his First season. So Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United. Uh, so we haven't only had different managers with different philosophies. We've overpaid for players in recent years. You know, we spent over £1 billion on players. There you go. And we haven't won the Premier League since 2013, which is eight years ago now. So anyway, guys, uh, later on I'll be giving you a preview for the Granada Manchester United game in the Europa League quarterfinal second leg. So anyway, guys, drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always, and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.